Welcome to physics. We are now in activity two of our energy unit. And so our topic today is going to be exploring gravitational potential energy. So uh, in, in our first activity, you'll, you'll remember, hopefully, that we, we introduced different types of energy uh, or different forms of energy. And gravitational potential energy was um, re related to height, right? And, and so when, when you lifted the little skateboarder higher in the air, the potential energy grew uh, and, and the, the energy of the system also grew. When you lowered the potential or lowered the height, you also lowered the, the gravitational potential energy. So remember that. That's our foundation so far as we go in uh, to our activity today. So with questions one and two, I want you just to think of an example of something that has a little uh, potential energy, gravitational potential energy. Okay. And that, again, that's represented by EG. And then I want you, ooh, just found a typo on both of those. <laughs> um, what is an example of something that has a lot of gravitational potential energy? And, and so endless possibilities, really, uh, you, you just want to make sure you, you touch on uh, what we already know, okay? Then uh, utilizing that, okay, just like what we did with motion, there is a way to calculate uh, the, 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 the amount of something. And so uh, in, in this situation where we're trying to calculate uh, the potential energy. And so uh, what that means then is that there are factors that uh, can be either divided or multiplied or uh, subtracted, you know, depending on the situation. Uh, to, to give us the answer. And so once we know those factors, then we can determine the energy. So uh, based on, again, just what we know so far, can we take a stab or a, a, an educated guess at what the factors might be? And so um, do your best and again, select all that are true. There, there's more than one, let's put it that way. And then uh, you're going to move down to calculating the potential energy. And I'm, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek, okay? This might help you with, with your answer up here because now we have the equation. This is the formula for calculating uh, that potential energy. And so similar, again, similar to before, I'm going to be giving you the equation. And then you just have to do your best to plug in the correct number. And, and calculate it out and then answer it in the correct units. And so we're going to be introduced to the units of energy uh, that we want to be familiar with. So our terms, just to, to clarify what this is saying, our EG is gravitational potential energy. So that's what we're trying to solve for. Okay. And the units is going to be called joules. And so you can write out joules or uh, it's usually represented by a capital J, okay? Then our M, similar to uh, in, in quarter one and uh, last year, <laughs> uh, we have M equals the mass, and the mass needs to be in kilograms, okay? So for the most part, everything I give you will be in, in, in kilograms, and so you need a mass. Then G uh, very commonly, but will continue to, to represent the force of gravity. So uh, we, you could say it's the G-force, but uh, that is, again, that 9.8 meters per second squared. We talked a bit about gravity, again, a couple months ago now or a month ago now. So 9.8 meters per second squared is the number. And, and what that also means is it's a constant. Okay, so you don't have to solve for G. You don't have to figure out what G is, and no one has to give you that number because you are expected to know that G is 9.8, okay? Uh, and when, when you put it in the calculator, 9.8. So 9.8 meters per second squared. Then the height of the object, okay? And, and really, uh, for, for most of our situations, this can be how far off the ground 
but you could also um, determine the the height of the object in, in relation to other objects. So uh, we'll we'll go down that path a little bit later. But basically, that the height of the object, how far is it off the ground, and this will be in meters. Okay, so uh, th that's that's important to represent. So uh, again, we have the mass, force of gravity, and the height in meters, and that's going to give us our answer in joules. So uh, again, the common unit of energy, a joule, a joule is a unit of work or energy in the international system of units. Okay, so it's it's a worldwide unit. And it is equal to the work done by a force of one Newton acting through one meter. And so uh, you, you might recall that Newtons was a, a measurement of force, okay, a unit of force. So we have one Newton through one meter uh, because, again, energy is, is also representing motion. So we have one unit of force going through one uh meter uh, of, of motion. So uh, that gives us this unit. So then uh, I have you practice. And, and so uh, again, just reading this, hopefully it, it feels straightforward now that we've practiced a lot with different calculations. But this is mass times gravity times height. And so when you enter it into the calculator, you just multiply the three numbers across and uh, you should get your answer again in joules. So uh, please show your work, then you should get a number. Okay, and this one is a scenario where you have a basketball. Let's say you're holding it out there, basketball, you're about to drop it from the two-story building. So uh, it has potential energy. Then second scenario, myself, I'm about to fall from a one-story building. Maybe I'm about to jump. Um, so what is then my potential energy? Uh, don't worry, I did not do this. Well, maybe when I was younger I did, but <laughs> not, not recently, so I'm okay. Uh, but you can calculate that. And then this question, uh, I want you to read carefully because I'm not asking about the potential energy, I'm actually asking about the kinetic energy. And my hint that I'm going to give you is you need to remember from our first activity, the introduction, the law of conservation of energy. And so uh, by answering these two questions, right, it says look at questions four and five, you should be able to, to understand the kinetic energy without having to do any more calculations. Okay, so um, to just keep that in mind uh, as you're doing this. And again, ask questions if you have questions in class. And then our final scenario, okay, getting a little trickier, but we have a skydiver now, a uh, mass of 80 kilograms. I tried to just make a nice simple number for us. Jumps out of an airplane 4,000 meters high and the reason I chose 4,000 is because uh, when, when I looked it up, uh, I got lots of numbers in feet, and is between 10,000 and 14,000 feet is, is a normal jump height for skydivers, and 4,000, I believe, is just around 13,000 feet. So uh, 4,000 meters, again, nice round number for us. What is the potential energy for that skydiver? And and don't be surprised if it's a very large number. They're very high. So uh, just keep that in mind. Then I'm going to challenge us to create an energy flow diagram that's going to represent the skydiver's fall. And so I, I've created this template for you. Okay. Position one. What does it look like in position one? Position two, the person is halfway between the ground and the airplane. Position three. They just pulled the parachute and they're they're obviously lower to the ground. And then position four, uh, it, it's drawn poorly, but they're they're just about to land on the ground. So they haven't landed to, and come to a complete stop. They they're they're just about to land. And so I want you to think about this. And so just again a refresher, you're gonna have potential energy, kinetic energy, thermal energy. 
Okay, we haven't talked much about that, but I'm going to challenge you to try to think about where does that thermal energy come from? That's heat, right? And don't forget uh, the total. Also, just a reminder from our introduction, the total is always going to fill all four of these bars, okay? So if you're making a little bar graph, it always goes to the top, okay? Uh, but what I want you to do is uh, do different colors for the three types of energy that are going to be present, and, and then you divide this up to match uh, your, your other bars, right? So it, I, identical to the introduction, which is why the introduction is helpful if you did it. So uh, please let me know if you have questions. Um, but, but I really want to see how you do uh, but before, okay? So give it a try. And then last but not least, uh, I, I kind of mention it. Can you explain to me where that thermal energy come from, came from? So explain why some of the energy in the system is converted into thermal energy. So uh, that's a little bit of a challenge question, but... Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in class.